Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this cookbook, the Royal Baker and Pastry Cookbook. Um, put up by the Royal Baking Powder Company. And this is dated 1908, but the date's down here at the bottom of the page and it's ripped and torn. And I can see 109, 190, uh, plain as day. So it's 190 something and it kind of looks like the top of an eight. So we'll just say 1908. And I really love these baking powder cookbooks. I've done a bunch of recipes out of a, of a wide variety of them. And in this time period, uh, marketing baking powder was cutthroat. A lot of these companies walked right up to the line without crossing over. They sort of said, all of our competitors are trying to kill you their products are unsafe. Only our product is safe and pure. Um, and this cookbook is no different. Um, it's all the same sort of hyperbole over how theirs is the safest and theirs is the only one that they should, that you should use. Absolutely pure, it says on the back. And it's also um, a little bit different than a lot of the other ones that I own in that it is jam packed with recipes. They are packed in here as tightly as they could get them. This is the most recipes I have seen in one of these uh, trade cookbooks. And the recipe we're going to do today is something called Yankee Puffs. And in reading the recipe, I kind of get a good idea of what I'm, of what I'm going to get at the end. I think we're going to get something that's kind of halfway between a Yorkshire pudding and what Americans would call a popover. And this one does have a little bit of sweet in that it's got a little bit of sugar in it. So that's going to bring it closer to uh, a sweet American popover than a savory British Yorkshire pudding. And it also has baking powder in it, which completely takes it out of Yorkshire pudding territory. But um, I think we're still going to get that sort of puff popover Yorkshire pudding type thing that you would that you would see. So the butter and sugar is creamed in the bottom of the bowl and there's not much here to deal with. Next, I need to separate two eggs. Um, we're going to whip the whites separately. So, separate that yolk. Doesn't want to separate. It's one tough yolk. And yolk goes in. Okay, so first mistake, <laughs> I have to whip the egg whites. I need to use the copper bowl. Of course I need to use the copper bowl. So I'm gonna switch over the first egg white into the copper bowl and we'll separate the second egg. These eggs, the shells, these are grocery store eggs. So the shells aren't nearly as nice as Cousin Jill's eggs uh, were a couple of weeks ago. They had great shells, great color. So different from these eggs. Anyway, so I'm just gonna cream the yolks into the butter sugar. And then over here I have some flour and to that I'm gonna add salt and baking powder. And we'll just give that a bit of a mix. Now, I need one and a half cups of milk, so get a measuring cup. Uh-oh, I might not have enough. Let's see. Is there enough? Is there enough? Is there enough? Uh, it's pretty close. Bag's empty. But just enough. Now, I'm not gonna use the electric mixer because I'm using the copper bowl. I'm gonna do it by hand. Something about whipping egg whites by hand in a copper bowl that I find uh, very enjoyable. I think that's pretty good. Stiff, but not so stiff. Uh, one of the problems with beating egg whites and then mixing it into other th batters or doughs um, is especially when you have to fold it in. 
If you beat the egg whites too far, they don't fold in. If they get dry and crumbly and you've got like a weeping liquid coming out of the bottom of the egg whites uh, in the bowl that you're whipping them in, you've gone too far. And you don't want to go that far. Um, and it's almost impossible to do that with a copper bowl. There's something about the chemistry. And I'm, I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it out loud in case I get it wrong. Um, this is the internet after all. Next thing we need to do is alternate between the dry and the wet. Um, and then adding in a little bit of vanilla and then the egg whites. It doesn't say to fold in the egg whites. So um, I kind of take from that that we're just mixing them in with a whisk. So in goes the flour and then a little bit of wa milk, not water. And I'll just alternate back and forth until it's all in there. I'm going to put in the vanilla at this point. The batter has whisked up nicely. It's a, it's a pretty light batter. It's about, it's about like a pancake batter. So I'm going to take the egg whites and I'm going to put in maybe the first third and whisk those in. And then the rest I'm going to fold in. Uh, I'm just kind of making this, just kind of making this part up as I go along based on best practices, things that you've learned, things that I've learned along the way about how to bake things. Um, may or may not be the correct thing to do, who knows? So we're gonna find out. The next operation is to bake it in a muffin pan, or muffin pans it says, in a hot oven. So I've got, um, I've got a couple of different pans in the oven heating up to 425. They're supposed to be greased, so I've got a little bit of oil in them, um, the same as you would do with a popover or a Yorkshire pudding. The front of this book gives, um, pictures or drawings of what they expect you to use for each recipe um, with the pans named in each case. And the muffin pan that it shows has eight cups. Um, and it's more like a popover tin than today's muffin tin. So let's see how this works out. Pan is hot, hot oil in the bottom of each cup, and in goes the sizzling batter. Okay, so I've got enough batter to fill two of these pans, and I've probably, no, I know I have. I've overfilled each of the cups. So I'm gonna get this one in. I have another one in here uh, with a different sized cup. And so I'm gonna blow out the rest of the batter on this one. And you need to move relatively quickly. You wanna keep everything hot, I'm assuming. It doesn't really give too many directions. This is 1908. They assume that you know what you're doing. They assume that you already know the recipe in some way. Um, so we'll get this second one in and we'll see what happens. So I have finished my spaghetti aquatania but I'm intrigued by this. Savory or sweet? It's got a loaded oh, question? Well, it's got a little bit of sugar in it, but not enough sugar to make it sweet. And it's got a little bit of vanilla in it, but not enough vanilla to make it sweet. I don't know. Is it a popover kind of well, thing? Well... And why do they come in small, medium, and large? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's called Yankee Puffs. Okay, uh, egg? There's a little bit of... There's egg, there's baking powder, there's milk. So it's sort of like if you took a Yorkshire pudding recipe, but you added a bunch of other things to it. Do you, do you get what I, like, so mm -hmm. it's not really a Yorkshire pudding. It's kind of Yorkshire pudding-like though. It's yeah. That. Do you cook it in oil the same way? You cook it in oil the same way. Oh, yeah. Very easily you could make this savory. Or you could just put jam on it. I was gonna say, okay, I can't quite, I'm not, it's funny because it's, it feels a little denser than a... It is denser than a Yorkshire pudding. Definitely mm -hmm. denser than a Yorkshire pudding. 
Still has the hole in the middle, but not as pronounced. They didn't puff up as much as I thought they would. That could be us. Hmm. I'm intrigued though, because it's got that very fluffy, like pastry texture to mm -hmm. it as well. Like it's a because it's a that being more dense than. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know where to put it in the in the realm of. You know, the, the, mm. Where does it fit? Doesn't fit anywhere. I mean, if you injected a little, like if you did like a donut and injected some jam or, or yeah. some cream in yeah. the middle. Oh no, I see. I'm willing to need a second one. What are those other things that come in that the like a. The no, French like a, thing in, in the fluted That's copper. what I was trying to think of, but I couldn't think of it for the life of me. Okay, so we've got these little copper <laughs> things that you coat with beeswax, and you make this batter, and you cook it in this... And they're really good. They're fantastic. We have a recipe somewhere. Yes. Somewhere <laughs> on the channel, I have done it like 15 years ago. I searched for these little copper cooking things We'll write the word forever. in. We'll write the name in. I'll try to link to that below <laughs> if the video is still on YouTube. It was so long ago. That's almost like that. Almost like that, but not quite. No, it's not. those are definitely sweeter. This is not anything anywhere, but it's, it's in the section. Clearly, we cannot define them. It's in the section here called Hot Biscuits, Cakes, and Muffins. So all the other recipes in this section are muffins or biscuits or pancakes. It's all of those things in a mold. I could eat those every day. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.